Hello, everyone. Welcome to the I2B2 Transmark Foundation 2019 training program. Uh, now, July and uh, 2019 session will be um, training on installing and updating I2B2 uh, by Mike Mendez. Um, if you don't know about our training program, we uh, we do run this class uh, every month uh, and uh, with different topics. Uh, you can see the topics on the screen, hopefully, uh, of other sessions that we've held already and what's coming up. Uh, as usual, we re do record these sessions and make the slide decks available on our website and also on our YouTube channel. So if uh, you, want, you have colleagues who may want to watch this again, or if you want to look at it again, please feel free to take a look at our YouTube channel. During the session, if you have questions, you can put a question in. There's a question window on the uh, GoTo, GoToWebinar control panel. You can also submit a question in the chat window or raise your hand, and we'll try to recognize you as quickly as we can. OK, well, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and uh, we can start the training. Mike, you should have control. OK, great. Thanks, Rudy. Um, you could no, not that one. Uh, you should be able to see my screen. It's a Windows box. Is that true? Uh, looking for it. No, I don't see it yet. Oh. You, did you, huh. you have to say you have to accept the presentation. Oh, okay. Oh, let me just hold on. Uh, it's a uh, uh, go to meeting box. Yeah, let me just force myself as a presenter. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably quicker. <laughs> okay, so do you yep. see it? Okay, G great. Okay, so thanks everyone for signing up. Um, so I'm kind of going to break this down into kind of almost three sections. Uh, one is going to be the installer 1711, uh, which is our current uh, production release. And then I'm going to go into 1712, which is the next release, because that's going to drastically make it easier to install. Um, so you'll see that we'll spend a lot of time doing the install on 1711 and then it will basically be drag and drop for 12. So, but I want to show what 12 is like. So uh, because we are planning on releasing 12, hopefully uh, we're slated for in September, like mid to se mid September. And so then the third part is, uh, oh, Ruth, I didn't ask you if this possible, is after this meeting at, uh, this, this goes from 11 to 12, at 12, I was going to have a group of people and anyone else who wants to join, uh, uh, basically, uh, we're setting up a way to do QA testing of the 1712 release. So I was going to, does this have a hard stop at 12, Rudy? Uh, no, we can keep going. We, we okay, can keep great. going. I'll, I'll probably have to leave it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine, but I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like, <laughs> because sure. I've already set up a couple of people, but anyone else who wants to join, that'd be great. It's basically any experience you have, um, and we'll, we'll go over that at 12, but it's basically just kind of um, the testing of the new release so that once it's out there, it's been tested yeah. by a bunch of institutions, and et cetera. Okay, so, so what I, uh, so I, um, so we're doing a section, the first part, which is 1711. So what I did is I used so, the old uh, VM. Like what I'm, so what I'm, I just want to check, Mike. And what I'm seeing is a directory. You're in a, uh, in a root local host window. Is yep. that the right screen? Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Th it should be a, a, this, uh, a screen right here also. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got it. I just want to make sure we're on the right screen. Okay. Go okay, ahead. Great. Sorry. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so if anyone that has any questions, just raise your hand or whatever, send questions out. So I used the VM for 1711, so this is the VM. Uh, if we go into opt wildfly, this is where the current wildfly installation for the 17 for the VM is. We can go do just quickly connect to it <clears throat> and make sure that we can log in. So, which we can. Okay, so we have it up. We know that we have a version that's up and running. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it down. Uh, and then I'm going to move the folder to uh, working version. Okay. So, now if we look, job, uh, Wildfly is not running. We have a complete. <clears throat> Uh, uninstalled version. You can download the software 
uh, from the ITB2 website. And so if you go to the main ITB2 website, you go to software, and the major components that we'd be interested in is the ITB2 core software, the web client, and the create DB, okay? Uh, because this is an existing VM, um, we're just going to focus on these two because creating the d database, I can show you how to do it, but it takes like 20 minutes to load all the data. So that's why I'm reusing that. Okay, so then if we go back to our home directory, so <clears throat> in the absence of time, I've downloaded all of the appropriate uh, software that we need. So we, we need access to, okay, and then we have the ITP2 core version 11. Uh, and then we have the web client, version 11. And then we have two versions of Wildfly. We're going to use currently the Wildfly 14, which is what is currently supported by 1711. And then later we'll use the 16. So I'm going to go to our op directory. We're going to unzip. Uh, oh, one last thing. Let me show you. Um, so in the... Uh, on the community website, they have we have the install guide, and so it's in essence with kind of what we're going to be going through. Um, one thing I do want to point out is on Linux you have this thing called SE Linux, the Security Enhanced Linux. Um, usually we like to turn that off because it um, adds some extra security that kind of conflicts with Wildfire. Um, if your institution says that you have to run it, then what you can do is you can add the ports that are uh, like 9090 uh, and the other ports are used by Wildfly into the SE Linux so that it will not like block those ports from being executed. So we're going to unzip the folder. Uh, so we're going to unzip Wildfly 14. And so as we can see now, we have this newly created Wildfly 14 folder. So <clears throat> the next thing that we want to do is this access to, we want to put that into the wildfly. So the un unzip the access to, okay. And then you'll notice there's an access to.war file that was created. So we're going to go into the, the opt wildfly standalone deployment folder. We're going to make a file called itp2.war. And then in this, we're going to unzip that access to access to war file. Okay, and so now we have we have a newly created ITP to that war fi uh, folder and in there we have all all the files from access to. So now we're basically ready to do the initial inst installation. So we're going to unzip the ITP2 core software. Okay. And so we're going to go into ITP2 core software directory. And in here, we'll have all these various different folders. So you have the um, CRC, which is uh, uh, the CRC uh, cell. And then you have the file repository cell, the identity management, the ontology of metadata uh, cell, the project management cell, uh, the workplace cell. And then the server commons is uh, the code that's used by universally by all the cells. And then you have the XML, which is used for generating, sending back, uh, it's the XSD files that are used to uh, send back the messages between the cells. So we start out by compiling the, the server code. So you go into the server co uh, common, and then, so if we look at our installation doc, so we're at the point of server common, and so, so in the server common install, uh, extract it, the structure, uh, where is the deployment? So in the deployment, we're going to run this ant script right here. And so this, what, what it's going to do is it's going to clean uh, the directory if it needs to be. It's going to create the distribution. It's going to de do a deployment. And then it's going to do some JBoss pre-deployment setup. Uh, so all of this is configured within this build property file. So in this build property file, it specifies where everything needs to be placed. 
which is in the opt uh, wild fly that we just unzipped. And then where is the access to load kit? And we created that folder called itp2.war, and so it's going to be placed within that. So I have Ant installed, and so I am going to just copy and paste this and run it. Copy. Okay, and so it's compiled everything for the server common, and then as you notice, it says it copied three files to this folder, and then it also copied three files, the same three files uh, was put into this folder. But if we take a look at, at this folder now, uh, we'll notice that it has, uh, so, Anything that was July 29th was added. So it added this codex, it added uh, this DHCP, uh, at this ex exec, and then it also did the ITP2 commons, which is down a little bit right here. So this is the ITP2 common core. And so, so it kind of loaded some files that were needed. And so next, the process is basically to go through each of the other folders. So once you have the server done, it doesn't matter which uh, ones are done next. It just needs, the server is needed to be done first. So if we go into, the, say, the CRC, and if we go back into our install docs and just take a look. Uh, so the CRC is going to have a similar ant script that needs to be run, so under deployment. We'll notice there'll be an ant script. It says uh, use the master build and then do a clean uh, build all and deploy. So we're basically going to do this for each of the other ones uh, after Apache and and then paste the code. And so it also added some files into the lib file, and then it did added some stuff into the standalone configuration. So if we look at that, opt wildfly stand, uh, standalone configuration CSC, it added these XML file and property files also, uh, which after we do the install, we'll have to modify slightly. So we're going to go to the ontology, and it's the same exact command. We'll run this. And we're going to do this both for the workplace and the project management cell. OK, and so we'll do that, the project management cell, run this. And then uh, EDU, the workplace, and likewise. Okay, so that so that was the uh, compilation of all the software and loaded it into the opt wildfly standalone deployment. And if we look here, we've now added some other files. So we added the Microsoft SQL Server JAW file, the Oracle JAW file, and the Postgres JAW file. We've also loaded in the default data source files for each of the different workplaces. But let's go look at that configuration again. So if we go to the configuration file section, uh, we'll see that there was three folders that were added, the CRC app, the ontology, and the workplace. So because we use the standalone, the standard uh, install doc, or install, app, uh, install zip file, which was con configured for Oracle, we have to configure some of these to point to our Postgres database. So if we take a look at the CLC property file, we'll notice that the data source, the data type is set to Oracle, and the schema name is ITP2Hive. Um, right now we're using Postgres, so we need to modify these. So, so we're going to say Postgres, and then the schema name is actually public for the SQL Server, or for the uh, Postgres. Um, and so, likewise, in the ontology, we'll need to modify this one. Instead of it saying I2B to Hive, it's going to say public. Uh, 
and then likewise in the workplace if we uh, modify this um, we'll notice that that also has to speak to public okay so so now the configuration files have been modified to reflect the current Postgres database. Um, the other thing that uh, we need to modify is the port in which uh, Wildfly currently runs on. So by default, I use port 9090 uh, because 8080 is sometimes used by other things. So we go into the – so I'll show you what file. I did that a little too quickly, I think. Uh, there's a – within the um, – standalone configuration folder there's a file called standalone.xml and so we just need to modify that file do a search for 8080 and then this is saying okay run http port on 8080 and all we need to do is replace that with 9090 and so after we do that now um, we'll apply we'll run on port 9090 um, so so that's uh, that part of it. The other thing is the data source files. So if we look at the data source files, say the CSV one, we'll notice that they're all configured to use Oracle. I'm saying, okay, use the Oracle JDBC. This is the uh, in the uh, the VM. Everything, all the passwords are set for demo user. So <clears throat> what this is saying is the, the Bootstrap uh, data source is currently pointing to the Hive, or using the Hive username. Um, in all in all of these except for the PM, there's actually two uh, data source created. One is the one that points to the Hive, and then the one that points to the actual data. In this case, it's the demo data. So, so one thing we could do for kind of site hacking, or cheating, I guess should say, is if we look at our previous one, and if we look at our CRC, previous CRC, we'll notice that this one is actually configured to point to Postgres. So this is saying, okay, use the JDBC driver. Um, <clears throat> the, the scheme is going to be uh, to be to Hive. Uh, the driver is the Oracle driver. And then this is the username and the password, okay? And then likewise, uh, the demo data is also in the schema of it 2 demo data. And then the username is it 2 demo and then the demo user. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all the previous ones over and just copy them into here because they're – I mean, likewise, what we could have done was just change this, these sections in each of the files. Um, but likewise, this is slightly quicker. Uh, no, I don't want to go. Okay. And so, <clears throat> uh, why is it deployed? Hold on one second. Let's see if Java's right. Oh, because I copied everything. That's fine. Okay. The, what got me confused for a second is it said that the CSC was deployed and the ITV2 ward are deployed. What I sh when I didn't when I did this command I should have done star .xml and not just star and so what it did is it copied these deployed uh, files over uh, so I'm actually just going to remove them right now uh, they get created when Wildfly starts for the first time so uh, I sh so I'll go back to what we had and if we take a look at say the project management data source file we'll notice that points to the Postgres and the this is the username and password to log in. And so basically now we're at a point that we could actually try to start it up and then see if we can connect to it. Um, so the one thing that we do need to do is we need to create a file called itp 2warddo deploy. Uh, <clears throat> any folders that are created within Wildfly don't automatically get deployed automatically. Uh, so this is saying I want you to automatically deploy this folder. Uh, any of the other JAR files will automatically get deployed. So, And so before we start, let's go to the web client for a second. And so this is our current web client that was part of the VM. So I'm just going to rename this to uh, uh, pre-VM, uh, whatever. And so I'm going to create it. <clears throat> a new folder called HTML, 
and then I'm going to unzip our ITP2 web client into this folder. Okay. And then if we notice there's a folder within that, this is, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move everything back one directory. And so likewise, I can then just remove that folder that was created. And so this will look very similar to the, uh, the pre one. The only difference is we need to configure the ITB2 config dot data. So if we take a look at the previous one, uh, we'll notice, okay, the domain is ITB2 demo. It's pointing to the demo data. <clears throat> the URL that's pointing to is uh, localhost port 9090 and then the PM. So if we take a look at our, our the current one that uh, is provided within the VM, we'll notice that it's pointing to the Harvard demo. So we're just going to say this is so July training, okay? And then instead of services itp2.org, we're going to do the local host 9090. So we're going to do 127.001 colon 9090, okay? And then we're saying <clears throat> ITB2 services PM service. And then uh, we're also going to say debug is true. And setting this to true um, brings that little icon on each of the tabs so that you can look at the XML that's being sent back and forth. So, so now if we go back <clears throat> to our web client, we, we haven't started the ITP2 service yet, but we just want to make sure that we can actually see the uh, the web client that we uh, just deployed, which is running on Apache, which we can. And we know that we're pointing to the new one because we set that to uh, July training. And so we know that we're pointing to th this newly uh, created one. So now let's go back to our Wildfly installation. And you can run Wildfly two different ways. One is you can do it standalone like this, standalone hyphen B 0.0.0. .0. Or the other way is you can go into the uh, into the docs folder. This is um, Wildfly, <clears throat> the version final docs. And then in here, there's a contrib folder and then scripts. And then in scripts, I use the init.d. Uh, and this is for the Red Hat. And so then there'll be two files that need to be copied over into uh, a certain folder. So the Wildfly init Red Hat gets copied into the init rc init.d and then it's copied right into the Wildfly folder. It's copied into the init and I rename it to Wildfly. Uh, the other file that needs to be copied is that wildfly.conf gets copied into the Etsy default folder. And instead of it being called wildfly.com, it gets renamed to wildfly. And if we take a look at it, um, we'll notice that <clears throat> uh, one thing I do is I, I specify where the JBoss home points to. Okay. And then the other thing that I change is in the JBoss opt, I say hyphen B000, which says broadcast, um, basically accept connections from any anyone instead of just your local host. Um, so, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it standalone <clears throat> so that we can see all the messages and any issues that might come up. Okay, so once we get to this point that it says Wi-Fi full version 14 of the core started 929 of 1121 services, now we know that the service is up and running. So what we can do is if, uh, we can log in as demo and then the password is of course demo user and see if it connects properly, if our installation worked. 
and <clears throat> as we can see, what it was doing was uh, so. Let's go down a little bit to uh, modules up there. Okay, so this is where we were at before. And so now what it's done is it's loaded the CSC property files. It started the the queues, the medium and large queue. Um, and so these are the configuration files. Um, loaded up some more of the CSC configuration files. And uh, started clearing up any of the old queues that happened. If there was any anything in the old queue, it kind of cleaned them up. And then loaded the data source and it's ready for any type of queries. So what we could do is we can go into say diagnosis, drag over something, try to run it, <clears throat> run it. And then as we can see, we got a patient result. And if we look at the code, we can see that it so we were here previously. This is actually creating the uh creating the patient set for that. And uh, it loaded anyone in that diagnosis, and now it's ready, and then it returned the results. So as we can see, the installation was a success, <clears throat> and it's working fine. So that's to install the 1711. Um, once we, so I'm now going to show you how to do the 1712. And so, <clears throat> but before I start that, are there any questions? About the one seven eleven install. I don't see any hands? Let's see. Let's just open up questions. Uh, oh yes. Uh, you have. Okay. Sorry. Uh, let me see if I can uh, unmute you. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. You had a question. Um. Hi, Mike. This is Louisa yeah. from Pitt. Hi. Um, how's it going? I, yeah. Good. How about you? Pretty good. 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 Thanks for giving the, the nice tutorial. It's very okay. helpful. Um, yeah. I have a I have two quick questions. The first yeah. one is um, is it will be okay if we upgraded everything except the Wildfly and then we keep Wildfly at uh, ten point ten zero? Uh, yeah, that would be fine. So that then the reason why that you guys upgraded to like Wildfly fourteen like doesn't have any like effect on the how does the 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 web client functional right? No, there, there was no, uh, the reason why we were upgrading the Wildfly is one, to make sure that it works with the newer versions. And the other one is just in case there was any security issues that come up, then uh -huh. we're, because there might be a security issue in 10, say, but then uh -huh. it, was, it wasn't in 14. So then we're like, okay, we're safe because we're running a later version. Okay. Um, so it was mainly on security. And then... The newer versions, like the 14 and above, have uh, some ways that they can automatically create data source files. Oh, okay, I see. And so there's some features in it that are kind of nicer. Oh, nice. oh okay. Thank you, thank you. And I have another yeah. question. Is So yeah. uh, we did upgrade it to uh, uh, 1.711. And after we upgraded the cell, the, the web, the, um, I'm sorry, the plugin that we created for our local database um, doesn't work anymore. And the reason is because um, like we kind of modified the ontology cell like to, you know, when you extract the code, uh, like we, we want to extract at every level of the, the concept, of, of all the, the, the terminologies in the concept. It, it yeah. used to work in the old I2B2 version of data, the I2B2 version. But after we upgrade it, it doesn't work anymore. Is it possible that you um, you upgraded some library? There are some libraries um, that you upgraded that may cause it, because I was trying to debugging it and I really couldn't find out why. <laughs> Okay, so let me think of this. So you mm -hmm. upgraded what was it, oh nine to oh eleven, and then uh, yes, and then like the the sale that the the plugin that we created, um, it's actually a sale we created for our um, local database use. Um, it doesn't work anymore, and then the the reason is because so when you when you were uh, changing from. Um, um, you were when you were trying to uh, when you were um, requesting the XML to the to the web client and when you when you got the XML back when I trying to get the body from the XML which is the the concept path um, like you couldn't get the body. Uh, I mean it could have we 
I know that in 11, we did change some stuff. Uh, 12, uh -huh. we're definitely changing. Like the JXB uh -huh. is basically getting completely updated. The oh, yeah. Completely... yeah, that's the JXB problem, yes. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, so JXB. Okay, let's talk afterwards yeah, because yeah, sure, I, sure. I, I can't remember. I, I might have done something with JAXB in 11, but oh, okay. I, I know 12, definitely JAXB got <laughs> upgraded. Everything got upgraded in 12. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it would be helpful okay. if you can send me some information afterwards, but thank you for, okay. for answering my question. Okay, yeah. Hey, Mike, okay, there's uh, one more question. See that? Yeah. Ming Wang. Yep, I just unmuted you, Ming. So the question was, what's the operating system required for 1711? So I, I, we, so we run Bamboo against all anything that gets checked in, and so we test that against CentOS 6 and 7, and also uh, a Windows box. I think it's like 2016 or 2012. So those are the ones that I say work without any issues. I know that it works perfectly fine in Ubuntu. Uh, I've run it on Ubuntu without any issues. Um, like stuff like I haven't tried it on like the Suzy, I think it is uh, Linux operating system. But honestly, it should there should not be any issues on running it in any type of Linux-based operating system because all it's basically a Java-based application. So if Wildfly runs fine on it, then ITP2 should run fine with any issues. Does that answer your question? I unmuted you. Oh, yes, this is me. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so so now that we got 1711 installed, uh, one, so I'm going to shut it down. One thing I'm going to just uh, show you is the uh, the data before we jump to 1712. And so, so I'm unzipping the, the data folder. Which will take a minute. Okay, and I'm just gonna make sure I don't. Uh, yeah, I still have 12 gig. Just want to make sure I don't run out of space on this VM. So if we take, if we go into the data, we'll notice that we have the EDU data. So we're gonna go in there, and then the release 1.7. And so in here, there's two folders. So one is the new install, and that's if you're doing a fresh install. And then there's the upgrade folder. So let's just take a look at the upgrade. And in the upgrade, if we say we look at the CRC, we'll notice that there's some scripts in here. And so if we take a look at, say, the uh, CRC create oracle, so, and so in here, it's broken into various different sections. So this is, if you've currently had a 1.6 version, and you're going to 1.7, then you would need to run all of these against your CRC database, okay? Uh, as you can tell, there was a lot that was done in the 1.6 to 1.7. If you're running 1.701 and you want to, and then you want, so let's say you currently run 1.701, and then you want to go to 1.7.11. You're going to have to first run the, these scripts that will bring you up to 1.7.02, okay? And then at that point, you're going to have to run this script, which will bring you from 1.7.09 to 1.7.10, okay? And then lastly, you need to just run the script to bring you from 1.7.10 to 1.7.11. So like I said, if you're at the 1.7.01 version, you would have to run all of these scripts against your database. And as we can as we look at it, so this is basically creating the temp table, a global temp table. This is altering the table, basically we're dropping this constraint. And then we're basically modifying this. We're setting uh that to Vaca two hundred and then we're setting that to Vaca fifty and then we're adding the constraint back. Uh likewise in this one we're adding the user role CD as a 255. And then in here, we're just inserting uh, an entry into the CSC privilege. So we're not like, dropping any type of columns. We're just adding new columns. So that's the philosophy we, we usually do is we always try to add stuff and we don't try to delete stuff. Um, so, so that was like the upgrade script for the CRC, and likewise, there's one for the Hive metadata and PM. 
So if we're doing a new install, um, say we wanted to do the PM. Uh, so we'll go into the PM folder, and then there'll be this DB property file, okay? And this is the one that needs to be modified. And so in this, it specifies, okay, what data type are we interested in? As we could say, this they all default to Oracle, but you set that to Postgres. And then you set your username and then the password. And then um, you, spec you put in the, dri the GDPC driver for the Postgres and then the URL where it points to and the port. And so if we were doing a load for the data, you would make those modifications. And then after that, we would have to run the ant scripts on it. And so if we just take, um, take a look at the install doc, and then I'll show you what it looks like in there. Uh, so we will look at the CRC, uh, what is it? Uh, server, oh, data installation. We'll do the, look at the CRC and then, uh, and so, oh, shoot. Uh, okay, so in here we're running this ant script and it's saying create the CSE tables. So if we take a look at the, the data one, and this, this is where it's saying this target create these tables and it's basically saying run all these SQL scripts. And so then after that, <clears throat> there's just, you would run the trigger one. And then if you wanted to load the demo data, you would load the the demo data. And so that's how you would basically load data into it. Okay. So now I'm going to quickly show, is there any other questions? I don't see any. Okay. I'm going to show how we install 1712. So, so if we go back to our folder, so for 1712, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Wildfly 16 this time. So let's make sure that we're not running this. Okay, so it's not running. So I'm going to go into opt. I'm going to do unzip uh, wildfly 16. And so we have that wildfly folder. Um, and so now I'm going to go to our GitHub repository. So this is a github.com slash itb2. And so in here we have... Uh, Notice that these were modified 17 days ago. So I'm going to grab the web client, and I'm going to clone and download, and just going to right-click on here and then copy this link location, and say wget. Let's see. I know there's multiple ways of actually. Uh, of doing this. Let's. Uh, I could just run git on the actual machine, but, and then I'm going to move master to 1712, 1712 dot, let's see, yeah, web client. <laughs> I really messed up on that typing, but anyway. And so the other two that I'm going to grab is uh, server core. I'm going to do the same thing, grab the zip file. Copy that, say wget. And then I'm going to move the master to 1712core.zip. And then likewise the data. Uh, Copy link location, wget. And as you notice, the size of the uh, data has ballooned. And the main reason for that is now we include the whole act ontology within the uh, the data repository. So if we take a, well, this is downloading. If we go to releases and then same type of thing, we have the same folders that we did before. If we take a look at the metadata, 
Before we just had demo scripts, now we have act scripts. And so if you look at the act scripts and say Postgres, we'll notice now we include a zip file. Uh, and that's because of the size of the metadata for the act was over a gig. And so in order to comply with the GitHub uh, requirements, I basically just zipped it up. Um, so now let me just move this master to master to uh, one one seven twelve data data dot zip. Okay. So let me just unzip this, and then we can show what the uh, the, oops, the new structure for the data looks like. And it has the same type of ideas. You have your data, the release. Uh, so if we go into the folder now, itp 2 data master, and then if we go into data, and then go into the release 1.7, and so we're going to go into the new install. Now let's just take a look at the metadata. And so as we can see, we have the act, which has some scripts, and then Oracle. Um, I also zipped up the uh, demo one. So if we look at scripts of Oracle, as you notice, it's now called metadata.zip. If we take a look at the build, the XML build now, so we have our same things. We're creating the, the tables, which is like it was before. Um, but the difference is, uh, so there's all sorts of new ones creating uh, patient counts for Postgres and SQL Server. So some of this stuff right now is not in the install docs at all because this is all 1712. This is hasn't been released yet. So I'm just kind of showing you what some of the new cool features are. Um, and so, so that's the Oracle one. But if we look at um, loading the data right here. So this is loading the data. And so first what it does now, this is new, is it unzips that zip file. And once it unzips that zip file, it then loads in all the SQL files that are needed. So that's this is one of the major changes that uh, within the data load. Um, the other major change, so let's do an install and then I'll show you the other major change. So we're going to un, uh, so I'm going to make 1.7.12, move 1.7.12. Twelve. Gosh, it. One seven twelve. Uh, okay, so I'm going to unzip the uh, one seven twelve core. Okay, so in here, um, it's the same type of idea. We had the server common, we had the workplace. But let's go into the server common now. And in here, we're going to take a look at our build.xml file that we, to, uh, to create the, uh, to do the installation. So we have our, the same stuff, the compile, the disk. Uh, but now there's this whole new section right here called the target name called war. And so what this does is it will create, so everything that was done before where you had to go into each of the different folders, we had to unzip that uh, access to into the Wildfly folder. This actually does everything and it will create the whole ITB2 install for you. So let's just take a look at our build.properties file, okay? And so we're pointing to 14, okay? And so let's look. And we actually wanted to point to 16 because it, we do, we're now using Wildfly 16. So let's just change that property file to say point to 16 and place it with zero. Okay. Okay. So now we're po we should be pointing to this folder. And if we take a look at that folder, opt Wildfly 16 uh, standalone deployment. We'll notice there's nothing in there. So we're just going to run the ant scripts, and hopefully this works. Uh, ant war. Like I said, this is uh, the next version. So hopefully, what are all these exceptions? 
Uh, hold on. Let's try. Try that. There's always issues when you're kind of running uh, beta software on a tutorial. Okay, so I think I just needed to do the clean first. Uh, so, okay, so I'll have to make sure that's in the documentation. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it, it built a zip file right here. Um, and so I don't know. I, uh, yeah, I think I have to work. Uh, opt. Wildfly 16 standalone deployment. Okay, yeah, so it hasn't added anything into it yet, so I think that's that's a to do. But as you can see, the, it created in this disk folder this itp2.war. And so if we look at that file now, itp2.war, uh, uh, and then say the WebAmp services, it now has it created all, all the files that were needed. Um, so I'll make sure that we it has a way to deploy it, but for just for now, I'm just going to move this itb2.war to the uh, created folder, standalone deployment. So app 12 fly, standalone deployment. And so we have a newly created war file, itb2war. I'm going to create my do deploy. And then uh, the other thing is I'm going to copy in all those data sources from the previous one. Uh, standalone deployment, start at XML. And because these are all still the same. And then the jar files. So now I've copied in our data, JDBC drivers for SQL Server. Um, or call in Postgres, and then I have uh, uh, data source files created for each one of them. So the other thing that we need is in the configuration file, uh, we need to modify the standalone to point from the standard 8080 to 9090. And so then that's it. And if you remember from the previous one, there was some folders in here, the CRC app, uh, workplace um, uh, ontology. So all these configuration files have been moved from the uh, this configuration file, uh, the old spring, into the database. So if we uh, move this, so so what I did is I logged into the database. So there's um, I logged into the ITB2 Hive, and then I said what tables are here. These are our standard tables. And so what I'm going to do is in our new install in the Hive, uh, the scripts, and then uh, create Postgres. I think it's this one. Uh, so we have in here, there's this new table, create uh, CSC params. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to Uh, don't like something. Let me try looking at this in raw. Uh, so not playing raw. Uh, and this was yeah, it's Postgres. Uh, try this again. Uh, hold on. Control. Doesn't out like this uh, tabs for some reason. Add. Uh, 
Okay, so didn't like the tabs for some reason. But as you can see, we created this new table called the uh, ITB2 cell pram. And hopefully I can copy the rest of these. And so in the new install, it's now anything that used to be in those configuration files is going to be in that table. So if we look at the, we have the query uh, processor, JNDI. Uh, let me just copy these, run them. Okay, hopefully that didn't. Uh, flash GT. Oh, shoot. Uh, no, that didn't. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to try a different way then. Uh, so I'm going to go back to our folder. I'm going to unzip. Oh, we already unzipped it. ITV2 data. Uh, 1712. So EDU release because uh, I haven't done the upgrade scripts for it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, opt wildfly 16 sail on deployment CSA no oh, that's wrong for this one is uh, okay, so I'm just going to edit the DB property files now. So we're in, we're interested in uh, Postgres. Uh, the username is hi. That's demo user. The driver is going to be this. And then the URL is going to be okay. 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 So the other thing that I need to do is in the data build. Uh, no, is I need to just modify the uh, the create post. Uh, create Postgres one, because I've already created these tables, so I'm just going to remove them. Do the analysis. Oh, wait a second. Uh, uh, did I do this? Yes, I did this in the wrong one. I did this in... Uh, the one seven eleven. I meant to do this in uh the one seven twelve. Sorry. Uh ITVT core. Uh uh I guess is it EDU data is that no, it's not. Hmm. Oh, I'll just unzip it here again. Uh -huh. ITV2 data, master, uh, EDU data, uh, release, new install, hive. Uh, let's edit this property file properly. Okay. So we have Postgres. Uh, that's the same. Insert that. Okay, and so now if we look at our scripts, uh, let's edit the scripts for the create Postgres. And we don't need these because they're already created. The analysis. Yeah, we've already created the ITB2 cell param, okay? And so now we just have these to run. Uh, let me just re-log in, uh, select, just make sure nothing was added. Uh, hive, cell, oh yeah, some 
some stuff was added. Okay. Uh, truncate table ITB2 five params. Uh, oh, hide self. Okay. And so, um, uh, so in here, I just want to load the data. Okay, so I'm going to do apt patchy uh, and, uh, and then all I care about is, uh, oh, it's creating the tables, this one. Uh, data build and uh, count crashes. Oh, shoot. Uh, hmm. What does that mean? This is why I need this QA. Uh, hmm. This is. Uh, Current transaction. I, uh, this I'm kind of stuck on for a second. I'm not sure why it doesn't like to run that. Uh, shoot. Uh, hmm. Well, in the uh, interest of time, because I know I hit the yeah, twelve. Top of the hour. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you quickly a working version, because this is now I'm going to just show you the uh, the version in our bamboo instance, um, and then, like I said, September is our release date, um, and so all these little issues will be resolved. I'm not sure why I wasn't able to load it. It's probably something simple, but. Uh, if we take a look at our BAM, you should see a Windows, uh, not a Windows, uh, a Mac machine now. Is that true? Rudy? Yep, yep. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so let's take a look at this Postgres 9.2 under databases, ITB2, under public uh, tables. Um, we'll notice that uh, we have this Hive param. So if we look at that, We'll notice that it's very similar to your param tables, but I added the cell ID to specify which cell it belongs to. And everything that used to be part of the XML files are now incorporated into this uh, table. And so when you do the deployment, you don't have to modify any of those XML files. Uh, if you want to make any changes to it, um, like let's say you wanted to change the threshold uh, like the timeout for the lodge uh, cell, then you can just change it right here, recycle ITB2, and then at that point you're all set. Uh, but likewise, uh, so yeah, so 1712 is definitely going to have some improved installation. It's going to be quicker. Um, I'll have the upgrade scripts all completed. And so, uh, so I think that was, yeah, like I said, I think we hit the, tw uh, we hit the noon time. So, I, I kind of wanted to give you an idea of what to expect in 1.7.12. And you can cre easily create a WAR file. It will be deployable, so just drop that WAR file directly into, IT, into the Wildfly folder. And then when you do your data install, it will load up all these by default. And so it will be a lot quicker. Uh, so I think that's it. Um, is there any questions? Uh, I just unmute everyone. Uh, Let's see. I'm going to try that. I'm just wondering, it's just uh, unmute anyone, everyone, and just if you have a question. Uh, oh, I think I can. Oh, uh, I think that. Uh, yes, I just unmuted everyone, I hope. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Unmute all. I think a lot of people are self-muted. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so um, okay, so are there any other que any questions at all before we jump to uh, the third uh, thing? One coming in. Uh, red cap integration is the question. Is that <laughs> part of seven twelve? Uh, I'm hoping it will be. I'm currently working with uh, Boston Children's and trying to use some of their code. So until I get that finalized, then I'll be able to check in the code. I have the code completely written so that what it does is within REDCap, you have that API that you can specify like where a trigger goes to when someone fills out the form. So that points to a new uh, web service in ITB2 called like REDCap Publish or something. Um, so you put your URL and then the 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 trigger name or the the whole like ITP2 URL in that section. When someone fills out the form, it then sends a token, sends a message to ITP2 saying that there's been a, a form. Here is the ID. ITP2 then goes back to Redcap and says, "Okay, I got this ID. Here is my special hidden token. Uh, what is that message?" So then it gets the uh, the questionnaire. It will load up all of the data into the observation fact. And then you have an option if you want to to load in and cre to create the whole ontology based on that uh, questionnaire. Uh, so that that's the REDCap integration. Uh, uh, and the second part of his question of Giacomo's question was, um, is do you know anything about the Harvard Vanderbilt um, collaboration? I do not know anything about it. Uh, actually, can we just unmute you? Uh, I'm just gonna unmute people by hand. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, what was that question? Because I'm not familiar with uh, the Vanderbilt stuff. I'm, I'm not either. You should, be unmuted. you should be unmuted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, no, we we're just curious if uh, is a just a. Uh, an initiative uh, by the ITB2 team or uh, there is a collaboration between the um, ITB2 team and the RedCap team, just this way. Uh, so what do you mean by the ITB2 team? Uh, the Harvard University. Okay, so that must be a different team because I'm not involved with the Vanderbilt. I'm definitely oh. interested in be, being involved with the Vanderbilt. I mean, that, that I would be more than willing to work with them, uh, but okay. I have not, I kind of did this uh, solo. So I'm definitely interested in talking to the RedCap people about this um, because I basically did this against an old version of RedCap that I had for Pokori, uh, which is partially why I want people to test it out because I, I mean, I probably could find it here, an updated version of RedCap, but uh, I'd, I'd definitely be interested in talking to people. <laughs> okay, thank you. And then um, Ronix is asking, will there be another session like this after the September rollout? And I think we need to do that, Mike. So we'll- <laughs> Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll have one and it'll yeah, be working. That's, that's a good question, yeah. yeah okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go on to mute, Mike, and just leave it running. And then you can just, if you can just shut it down whenever you're finished. Okay, that sounds great. So, like I said, so now I'm jumping into the 1712 uh, QA, basically ways of testing out kind of what I just did, testing out some of the red cap stuff. Um, I know I talked to a couple of you beforehand, but is anyone else interested in uh, QA in 1712? Uh, Besides uh, Ming, Luke, and George, I think is if he's on. Is there anyone else interested in uh, QAing the one seven twelve? Hi, this is Everyone Peter Rice. I'd be interested in in uh, having a look and comparing it to what we do with Transport nineteen. Okay, great. Uh, so anyone else? <laughs> 